இங்கு இருக்கும் காலம் வரைக்கும் இந்த பறவை பாட்டு படிக்கும் solo guitar which is our uh, dx7 chords and uh, yeah sashi sir's uh, eternal bass puru sir's rhythm programming of course umar ramanand's uh, exceptional singing this is uh, really a one off song um, especially i want to come back to those uh, yamaha dx7 chords that you heard in the prelude um, i think uh, 10 12 years back i have written an article about this new term i coined called chord density means uh, you know number of chords per unit time i mean even if you play one chord per beat that in itself um, you know is uh, is a rarity but um, depending on the phrases of the song the way how master raja you know packs the punch in the chords is is unbelievable i, I just want to take you back to that guitar prelude and please pay attention to the way how the chord is arranged for that phrase right let's uh, go directly there with that arrangement one is the inversion inversion is the you know variant of the chord that you play the song is in c minor c minor can be played in three ways this is the you know first inversion second inversion third inversion all are c minor but the inversion you pick changes the color of the chord and uh, you know the simple rule of thumb is to pick an inversion that matches with the lead note in the melody at that point in the time right so this is the melody so the inversion chosen are such that the last note of that chord always coincides with uh, you know the lead note in the melody it's, it's maybe obvious maybe not but uh, you know as a player to work around the same progression in the same area and yet to create the variation um you know it, it has to be spontaneous you cannot sit and think and compose it, it just have to come that's what you see here so just play it slow for you to follow uh i mean see if 
I have to show it to you slowly and if I have to pause, I can't get the flow. I have to play it without thinking. And that's the only way it comes, right? Um, uh, if you look at the chords, it's it's same C minor. So, uh, but the uniqueness in this arrangement is that the minor fourth, which is F minor in this, is is not used at all, which is very very unusual for a Raja minor song. He he thrives on this progression, but you will not see this F minor at all. And, that's the reason it's the same scale he uses time and again, but the sound is different because the ideas are different behind every song. I mean, uh, yeah. F major. The fleeting F major comes there. That no, instead of a minor note, there, there is a there is a fleeting major there, right? That's Phenomenal. Second is the syncopation. That is the you know the way how the uh, downbeat falls, uh, line after line after line. It's different in this prelude. You know that syncopation is very very important in creating novelty, right? That that element of surprise. So first note is on the beat. Uh, first first line is on the upbeat. Second line is on the beat. And then the third and fourth are thirds. So first two lines are in fours, four by four. Second two lines are in three by four. Right? I mean, um, it's so much packed um, in, in, in one prelude, especially with the tone of the DX7 of the 80s. It, it just sounds heavenly. If you just listen to the original track, um, I'll just uh, play it uh, uh, once again and then uh, we will close and uh, hope you liked uh, this presentation. Mm -hmm.